the original system that we used has been used all over the world in America, India, Vietnam, Australia, Spain, and now we bought it. Now the GCC is one of the only areas on planet Earth where agriculture makes up such a small part of each individual country's GDP. 2017, I asked my team a question. Could we create a sustainable and affordable source of animal feed produced locally and sustainably in the Middle East? And secondly, could we use the animal feed to produce livestock and create an economically viable agriculture sector in this country. Now those were difficult questions to ask and even harder questions to fulfill. But in January of 2018, we set about our first part of the mission. Where we opened our first R&D facility to basically build varying different systems that produce hydroponic sprouted barley. Design a system, uh, grow the hydroponic feed, and then run feed trials with varying different animals. Um, the first system we built cost around $300,000 um, and we built two of the exact same system uh, directly opposite each other. So we built these two warehouses uh, or growing systems in around three and a half months. Um, and after we built them, we, we really started to operate them and started doing feed trials, varying different uh, livestock, horses, cows and sheep. Uh, now, one thing that we found was the material handling of the system was taking us forever. Um, it was taking four guys about six hours to harvest a ton of grass, which, you know, at the Spanish labor rates of 15 euros per hour times, you know, six hours times four guys, it was, uh, you know, the most expensive feed on planet Earth at that point. So we spent a year in Madrid doing absolutely nothing other than growing grass and making sure that, that we could deliver day in, day out on what we needed to deliver because livestock don't, you know, uh, they don't want to take the day off. They're not like, ah, it's okay guys, we don't want to eat today. You know, they've, they've got to eat. So the most important thing was, was this system scalable, easy to manage and consistent? We rebuilt the system so we could move things. We rebuilt the system so nothing was fixed and we kept changing and changing and changing and changing. And I believe we built, you know, 30 variants of a, of a system that we now use uh, here in the Middle East. But we got some good results from there because we started doing feed trials with Pascual. Muy bien, la experiencia, la experiencia es positiva. Los animales han mejorado la, la calidad de la leche sobre todo. Han mejorado... Las calidades de la leche son buenísimas. No, no se ha notado la, la bajada. Incluso ahora en abril otros años bajaban y este año se está manteniendo. Now, a lot of the evidence or research on hydroponic barley at the time was very anecdotal. And the second we saw it with our own eyes and we saw how the farmers reacted to it and we saw how the vets reacted to it, and most importantly, how the animals reacted to it, we knew that we had a product that could work here. We went to Madrid in an aim to be able to produce consistently a certain amount of product per ton, given a certain amount of space, using a certain amount of time. Obviously, if we could do that, and if it did work, and it was all big ifs back then, it was a game changer for the region. So what we're doing is we're going 150 meters length, 100 meters wide, to equal about 15,000 square meters of length. And it was literally 55 degrees um, and it was absolutely brutal it was horrible and the poor guys were just like boss can we because I was still working I didn't care I was I, had a, I was on a mission um, and the guys were like boss can we, can we work nights and I was like yeah sure and it was locked down anyway there wasn't a lot going on so we ended up working nights for the whole summer yeah so the the whole, the whole container thing was, uh, and I always wanted to build a house out of shipping containers because I always thought that it looked like a really efficient way of, of, of building houses. 
And so when we first built our offices, there was two options, either sandwich panels or containers. So I thought, well, you know, I've, I'll give this container office a try. Uh, would I recommend it? No. Um, is it hard work? Absolutely. Uh, just, I think, you know, just cutting out the side of the containers, I think we went, th I don't know, I went through, I must have gone through a thousand discs, like cutting discs, it was in, in, insane. Ryan's like, Ryan like fuck around from them. There's a project going and he's like, get that shit done. Ryan wanted it now. So we all built it now. That makes sense. You haven't got a license to use the hammer. I was born with a hammer in my hand. Matty doesn't have a ticket for this, you see, so he can't use it. Something that you only learn on a bit of fucking side activity, mate. Come on, man. You want a little bit of this action? Yeah, you like that? Oh! We built the entire thing and we finished the project on June 16th. And then a storm came. And I was sat in a restaurant and I got a video from the guys and they said, listen boss, the farm's blown over. And I actually left the dinner and, and I drove all the way to the farm. And they told me that far boss the, the the farm's destroyed. And I said, okay, great, let's fix it then. And that was it, we fixed it. There's no point in worrying about those things, Sal. This is life. This is this is just part of the process. Nothing things don't always go correct or go as you want them to. You just have to fix things and move on. I don't think he accounted for a cyclone, and then obviously we did need some reinforcement, so we had to you know, re reinforce all, all of them, which we have now, and yeah, that's it. It's, uh, the farm's not blown over since, and hopefully it, it doesn't. Yeah, we, we also learned a lot of other things when building this farm because um, the, the, the other systems that we built were actually inside, right? So we had clean water, mains water, we had electric power uh, from the mains, and here we just didn't. We, we literally took a piece of desert, just like this, in the middle of nowhere, and we built an entire farm with offices, staff accommodation, a 15 tons a day production capacity, and a home for of, of Australian white. So you know, we literally built it in the middle of nowhere from scratch in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, in the middle of a lockdown. And you know, as we were doing it, we learned a lot of things and you know, we've, we've done it now. The sheep have arrived, they're doing well, they're feeding well. Grass is growing well, and you know the project's on track to. So now it's a it's a delivery thing. We've got to deliver on on the contract that we've got and, and build from there. Not, but it's, not, it's still not finished yet. There's still more to do. It'll never be finished. Nothing's ever finished. Uh, place in the world? Yeah. Where doing this would be much easier. Correct. So why? That's an easy question to answer because there's no other place on earth that imports as much lamb as this place. The way that I see it is there's a $3 billion gap to fill. So if you can do it here, 
which we are doing here, and it works here. Simply one. The $3 billion untapped market where there's no competition because everything now is imported. So if there was one place on earth where there was a need, not a want, a need for this solution, it was here. And I got about speaking to a, a gentleman that was a, a sheep broker, for want of a better word, in Australia about bringing in a plane full of white dorpers. He said, hey, have you heard of this Australian white? And I said, no, never. And he said, it produces the best lamb in the world. I said, does it really? Great story. Two, one, go. He said, no, you've really got to speak to this gentleman called Graham Gilmore. He's, he, he invented the Australian white and it produces the best lamb ever. After I'd spoken to Graham, he really knew all his stuff about sheep. He really knew what he was talking about. And I said, you know what? Let's, uh, let's see how good this lamb is. Send, send us some lamb. So he's like, all right, I'll send you some. So we arranged to give that lamb to a chef called Mansour Mamarian, which is the only two Michelin star chef in the entire GCC. I knew that if the lamb was that good, Mansour would know instantly. Hello, stuff with the truffle potato puree. My first impression of Magra was simply wow. So we have like a permanent office base at the Versace at the moment where we take uh, people for tastings of Margaret. Tried the Margaret uh, lamb. It was absolutely delicious. Uh, to be honest, I've never tasted lamb like this before. The evening, and that is some of the best time I've ever eaten. We kept taking buyers from varying different big butchers companies, big meat importers, and everybody said the same thing. It's incredible. You know, we are producing the wagyu of lamb. We actually met a company called Al Khalil Meat Trading. Uh, who are the biggest importer today of Australian lamb into the region. They bring uh, 800 carcasses per day. Um, and we signed a, an offtake agreement with them uh, to supply them with 10,000 carcasses uh, per month on a five-year fixed deal, which is about a 570 million dirham contract that we signed. The vertically integrated food system as part of a, a journey with Tati Keel and, and Verticroft. So, and it just happened to be the world's finest lamb. And it's not uh, us that say it, it's every chef we've ever given it to. People are blown away by it. The eating quality, the intramuscular fat, the melting point of the meat, the growth rate of the lamb, the reproduction capacity of the, of the animal, the, the live weight, the mothering ability, the ease of care. It's such an incredible sheep. And, you know, we just decided that instead of going with the white dopers, we were going to partner with with Tatakil for their experience and knowledge and know-how in, in what they're doing. They're, they're probably the best in the world at what they do. Um, and the, the breed and the, the speed at which the breed has grown is testament to how good they are at what they do. Um, and we decided to bring some over. We built that out so we can fit around 5,000 head on our current site. Um, and we've got obviously the feed to feed them. Um, from there we'll keep growing. And, and the key for us now as a company is to fulfill that optic agreement. How many people told you that, that was impossible? Everybody. When everybody said that it was impossible for us to create a, a vertically integrated food security solution, then, well, we did.